love the teacups, even though you throw up on them while they're so good. Have a churro and a hamburger, boom, guaranteed vomit, vomit, uh, vomit cup. That's what that is. And that's why they're in a cup. It's right there. <laughs> then there's Space Mountain, and there's the, uh, don't they have a droppy one? Just drops you? The droppy one, yeah. The hotel. Yes, the Haunted Hotel, that's pretty cool. There's two other ones. Oh, the Buzz Lightyear, yeah, that's kind of lame, but whatever, we'll count that. And then, uh, yeah, the line's like 14 hours long. Oh my god. That's a jip. You only get one at a time, Eight or two at a time. Okay, Indiana Jones, whatever, you twist my arm. <laughs> There's only seven good rides at Disneyland. Now, you're going to go early in the morning, right? And you're going to get there, so you're going to be the first person on those rides, but you got to determine which ride you're going to go on first. So we're going to have a game plan. We're going to say, we're going to go to Indiana Jones first, because that's the longest one. Then we're going to go to, uh, like, Space Mountain. Then we're going to go to this, and then that, and then that, and then two other ones, and we'll call it a day. Does that make sense? How many ways could we do that? How many different orderings could you have of those seven rides? There are seven cool rides at Disneyland. How many different ways could you ride all seven? Let's think about it. Are the, are the rides unique? Are they distinct? Yes. Yeah, Indiana Jones is not the same as Space Mountain. Those are seven distinct rides that you're going on. How many choices would you have for your first ride? Seven. Then after you went on that one, you'd only have six. And then so on. So this, since these are N or seven distinct different rides, what our, our factorial says up here is that we have seven factorial different ways we could ride those. Seven for the first choice, six for the next choice, then five, then four, then three, then two. And then after you exhaust all your resources, you only have one ride you can go on at the very end. So that's why, how we're getting a seven factorial. How many ways is that? How many ways is that? Probably need to use a calculator on that. How much? 5,040. 5,040? Wow. So you did seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, right? We really don't have to do the times one, you know, we know that one. But 5,040. So you could go, see, there's only seven good rides. You could have 5,040 different experiences at Disneyland. Isn't that awesome? Just a different ordering. It'd give you a whole other view of Disneyland. It's cool. Very cool. Would you like to see how to do that in your calculator, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But you might. Because if I give you something like this, why don't you calculate 31 factorial? Huh, it's going to suck because you're like 31 times 30, 30, 29. That's, that's not that great. We don't want to have to do that every time. So let's see how we do this. I even brought a calculator today. Mm -hmm. So you have your calculator in front of you. Here's how you calculate a factorial pretty easily. What you're going to do, you're going to put in the number that you want. So let's say 7. We go over to map. You go scroll over to the PRB. What's PRB stand for, do you think? 
Probably, so it's probably here, right? So <laughs> probably in there. And sure enough, it is. This is everything we're going to be dealing with in our probability. So probability goes down here. We're talking about probability, as a matter of fact. Go down to the factorial, press enter. It'll, en it'll put it after the number that you're putting in there, press equals, and it does it for you without doing a whole lot of calculation. So that's kind of nice, right? So it having to do 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Um, this works very well. Did it work for you? Yes. Okay. So again, we're going to go math, probability, down to your number four factorial, and that will give it to you. If you don't have one of these calculators, if you have one of these calculators, it should still be on there. I think it is. I hope not on this one. Yeah, there it is. Turn it on. But then do you see the... I have to move it like this so you can see it. Do you see the factorial button on this? On this particular calculator, it's above the three. It's in those yellow letters. On yours, it might be somewhere else. I don't know where it would be. You can come see me at the class, and I'll, I'll show it to you. Uh, to use those yellow letters, you have to use either a shift or a second function. So to do this one, I press the number seven. I go over to second. Press my second. Notice how the second pops up on the top. And then I press the 3. And by pressing that 3, it's going to give me actually the factorial above it. It gives me 5,040. So in this calculator, we're punching in the number, then second, then the factorial, and it'll give it to you either way. Saves you some time, so you don't have to do that, especially with large numbers. However, if we do, man, if we do use some large numbers like 31 factorial, it's huge. It's massive number. I mean, that's really, 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 really big. That, do you know how to read that notation, by the way? 8.222, something, and then the 33rd. That means that you take that number, 8.22228338654, you move the decimal places 33 spots to the right, and that's actually the number. That's a massive number, okay? So your calculator might not actually give you the exact thing, because we're, we're missing some stuff on that. Uh, but it's, it's a lot easier to punch in 32 times all that garbage. Lights, please. Perfect. Okay. No more hairy baby face. Let's go ahead and talk about these things. So these different arrangements that we're talking about, every different arrangement, that's called a permutation. Can you say permutation for me? Permutation. That was everybody. Permutation. permutation, that's right. A permu like you're getting a perm and then it mutated. Perm mutation. Right, that's, that would be awful. Don't ever do that. <laughs> anyway, a permutation is just a different arrangement of items. Permutation is a different arrangement of items. And for us, we know that n unique items will give us n factorial arrangements. And of course, we mean unique arrangements, right? We don't want to have the same arrangement twice. That wouldn't be different. The pictures would look the same. However, there are certain cases in which you don't want to find out all the arrangements. You only need to select a few. For, for instance, let's say that you're, uh, you're running for governor. How many counties are in California? Do you know? How many counties are here? I want to say 58. If I'm wrong, well, whatever, we'll just say it's 58, okay? Let's just pretend there's 58 counties. I think I'm actually pretty close. If there's 58 counties in California, and you're going to run for governor, are you going to have time to visit all 58 of those counties? 
Probably not. So let's say you're a really lazy governor, and you're like, you know what? Just pick four out of a hat, whatever, I don't even care. It's going to be on TV anyway, right? So, so you're going to go to just four of these counties in person. So you have 58 to choose from. How many ways could you visit all 58 of those counties? Are the counties unique? Yeah. How many ways could you visit all of the counties? You're not going to be able to say like 14 or something like that. It's not going to work. You have to say 58. How many ways can we visit it? How many choices do you have for your first county? How about your second one? Are you guys playing along today? 57. And then? Then 55. What am I doing here? 54, 53, 52. What is that called when I multiply every number below a certain number? So the ways you can visit 58 different counties is 58 factorial. Are you with me on that? That's a huge number of ways. Now, we're not going to visit all 58 counties. We're going to limit it to four. We're going to go to four counties. There's 58 counties in California, you need to go to four of them. If you're just going to be the governor and pick out counties out of a hat to visit, how many ways, how many orderings can you visit your counties, basically? So let's think about it. How many counties are we visiting? We're visiting all 58? How many counties are there? Yes, 58. How many are you going to visit as the governor? We're going to visit four. And you're going to pick them at random out of a hat. Out of half. So you pick the first one. How many choices would you have for the first county? You have 58 counties to choose from, right? Are you with me on this? You have 58 total counties to choose from. How many choices do you have for your second county to visit? Why not 58 again? You're not going to visit the same county four times in a row, are you? That'd be kind of silly. So. You'd be the dumbest governor, at, well, not ever. <laughs> Never mind, this is political, so whatever. I'm sure there's been dumb, dumb governors all the time. So you pick the first county, that means that there's only 57 choices for your second county. How many is for their third, third county? And what this is saying is that if you have 58 choices for the first one, 57 for the second one, 56 for the third one, 55 for the fourth one, do we have to go on to the 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, all the way down to 1? Mm -hmm. That would be if you were visiting all 58 counties. In this case, though, we've got just 58, 57, 56, 55 because we're only going to four counties. How many is that, by the way? Can you tell me? Like that? So if you were governor and you wanted to visit four